All right. Um, sorry for the for the delay, everyone. We've had some um, some technical issues, and actually, one of our participants um, is going to join us in just a second once we've figured out um, how um, the technology works um, or how we can make it work to our own purposes. Um, but so, welcome to everyone um, for for being here um, on this. Friday afternoon, morning, evening, wherever you are. Um, welcome um, to this book launch event um, for Women's Voices from Kurdistan, a selection of um, Kurdish poetry, which is hosted by the Kurdish Studies Journal um, and by Transnational Press London. And this is the first book launch we are organizing in this way, um, but there'll be more to come. Um, amongst others, we'll do, we're planning to have a book launch um, at the end of the summer or early fall uh, with Professor Sharzad Mojab um, about the recently published Women of Kurdistan, a historical and bibli bibliographic study, which was also published with Transnational Press. Um, so keep your eyes open for um, more events of this kind in the future. Now, if we come to today's um, event and today's book, uh, Women's Voices from Kurdistan, I should say that um, as someone who has, you know, myself worked um, on Kurdish women's voices, Kurdish women's desires and struggles for voice for quite some time, uh, this publication um, has really, really excited me um, and, it, and I'm really, really glad and honored um, to be able to celebrate this publication uh, today in this form. Um, and so today we have here, um, well, for, for the moment we have the two editors of the book, but hopefully the third one will, will join us in a moment. So uh, we have Dr. Farangis Qaderi, um, Dr. Clemence escalbert Ugel, and then um, hopefully, Yasser um, Hassan Ali will join us in just a second. Um, and we also have with us Holly Mason, who is a Kurdish American poet and who will um, give her view of the book um, after we've, um, you know, had an introduction from the editors themselves. Um, so uh, just so that you know how this will, um, how we will proceed, um, we will first um, have the three editors um, answer a couple of questions about the making of the book, um, the translations and, and the poetry that it contains. We'll hear some poetry from the book. Then Holly will give um, her view um, on the publication and then we'll open it up to question and answers. And please be aware um, to write your questions in the live chat function um, so that we can then see them um, and read them out for everyone. Um, and I can see that Yasser is, I think, joining us. So that's good news. Um, just about in time. Um, so um, maybe we should just go ahead and start sort of with the first kind of round of question and so that we can sort of hear a little bit more about the background of the book. So the first um, kind of broader question that I wanted to, to put to you as the editors of the book um, is if you could tell us a little bit more about how um, the idea for the book came about um, and what was a little bit the background um, to the making of the book? And we will start, I think, with Farangis. Um, so let me just briefly, sorry about this, um, actually introduce Farangis um, before, uh, we will start with Clemence. Um, yes, sorry, um, um, it's too hot in this, <laughs> on this Friday afternoon, unexpectedly in Brussels. Um, so let me just get this right. So um, we will start with Clemence and Clemence, just to introduce her, Clemence, Dr. Clemence Galva Eugen um, is a lecturer in um, Kurdish studies at the Institute of Arab, uh, Arabic and Islamic Studies at the University of Exeter. Um, and she has uh, published, as many of you probably know, extensively on Kurdish literature, Kurdish heritage, and cultural production in Turkey, uh, including a monograph um, that is called uh, Langue, Literature et Engagement, Le Champ Littéraire Kurde en Turquie, uh, which was published in 2014 in Paris, and she has many other publications. Um, so, um, I will give the, the word to you, Clemence, and then um, we can continue the round. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Marlene, and thank you very much for well, the um, Transnational Press in London for organizing this event. It's um, nice to exchange about the, the book and the project. Um, so, I think um, before before the book, there was another idea, which was um, uh, which um, and and the book came. The book idea came up after um, a workshop we organized, um, a translation workshop we organized actually a few years ago now in 2018 in uh, in Exeter. 
So there was um, um, a translation workshop of uh, Kurdish poetry, which idea came up really because um, we are uh, in Exeter at the time, and at the time in particular, still now, um, quite a few uh, researcher, um, like lecturer and, um, and uh, a PhD researcher as well, working on Kurdish literature. So there was like a, quite a like, um, relatively big number of um, scholars interested in this issue and actually researching Kurdish literature. And as part of their uh, work, uh, um, uh, translating uh, literature. Uh, Kurdish literature in English, and uh, this uh, this was uh, this translation we're using uh, for the dissertation in the publication, and um, and it also came and so that was like so the idea. So we came together a few of us, uh, so um, uh, different colleagues and and students, so um, uh, including Frangis and uh, and Yasser, discussing what we could do in order to think about um, the practices of translation of uh, Kurdish literature, try to uh, develop a bit this practice and for ourselves, but also maybe for other um, uh, um, researcher and student uh, to come and uh, how can we raise uh, uh, this awareness on, on this practice of translation. And this was important for us as well because we noticed that there was so little, uh, so little known and so little available in English uh, in terms of Kurdish literature. So we came together um, and uh, we had a small grant um, from the British Institute for the Study of Iraq. So we had like a, a kind of focus on uh, Kurdish literature from Iraq. And this was quite interesting because we decided to include the different uh, languages used by um, uh, um, Kurdish writers and uh, in particular Kurdish poets, um, um, so which include the different dialects of uh, Kurdish but also um, Arabic and this was really nice for us because it enabled us to bring the, our colleagues uh, from uh, the Arabic department, Arabic studies department and we worked together and it was it was a very good way for to exchange and uh, for them to become a bit like aware of what Kurdish writer was uh, were writing, and um, so I think that was a very good experience. And uh, we also decided to have um, well a selection of texts that we all um, different. Uh, so um, all of us, or some of us, brought along some text that we found was uh, interesting, or that we wanted to translate, mainly poetry. Uh, because most of us were working on poetry at that time um, and uh, I think we, and also with a focus on gender we thought that was an interesting topic to uh, to explore. So uh, texts were brought um, um, from uh, text from a right um, um, a Kurdish writer from Iraq dealing with the issue of gender, sexuality, uh, but from both men and uh, women uh, perspective. So we had texts from um, um, produced by both um, by both uh, during the workshop, and the workshop took two uh, two uh, two days, and uh, we worked together. Like we were, we had different uh, groups working together around mainly around one author or one language. Um, so Arabic, um, uh, uh, Sorani, and Badini. Balinani mainly, um, and um, so we came. We came up. So we worked really. The, the idea was working together with um, native speakers uh, of Kurdish and um, non-native speakers as well, like uh, people, uh, people like me, for instance, who have learned uh, Kurdish after um, uh, um, um, as a student, or people as well not knowing Kurdish at all. Um, uh, who, uh, who worked with us in order to edit uh, the final version of the of the poems, but we can talk about that later when we talk about the um, uh, the, uh, the translation process. So the the idea came. So that at the end of this uh, of this workshop, we had like different poems, different texts are uh, translated uh, in a, uh, at a at a very at various uh, stage, like more or less draft, more or less finalized, and. Um, uh, and Frankis will talk a bit more about the way uh, where we evolved from the idea of like um, a quite a informal workshop toward like a publication. 
Thank you very much, Clemence. Um, so um, for explaining a little bit more sort of the, the background um, of the making of this book, um, the next question that I wanted to ask is about a little bit more um, about the motivations um, that you had for the book as such and what you what you were hoping to achieve with it. Um, and I will give the floor um, now to Farangis um, and just let me briefly introduce her. So um, Dr. Farangis Qadiri is a research fellow at the Center uh, for Kurdish Studies at the University of Exeter. And she's also a postdoctoral researcher at the Institute of Oriental Studies um, at Jagiellonian University in Krakow. Um, she um, has um, her PhD is um, from um, the Kurdish uh, Studies um, Department uh, at the University of Exeter. Um, and um, in, in this doctoral research, she looked at the emergence and development of modern um, Kurdish poetry. Um, and um, as many of you will probably know, she is the author of several um, period articles and she's also an editor uh, with us on the Kurdish Studies Journal and um, at the Kurdish language Delwaza Journal. Farangis, the floor is yours. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Marlin, and um, uh, to um, uh, Kurdish Studies um, a Journal um, and also the Transnational Press for hosting, um, arranging, organizing this event. <clears throat> So I'll, I'll just follow up on what uh, Clemence said uh, based on uh, she mentioned the, the workshop, which was really um, the, the, the beginning of this project. And uh, so by the end of the, uh, the workshop, we, we had a number of uh, uh, poems that we had translated, but they were mostly focused on Iraq. And uh, we, we shared uh, these translations uh, first at um, local festivals, including Respect, Exeter Respect Festivals in 2018 and 19, and also Exeter Literary Festival, which is a significant literary festival here in the southwest of the UK. And we were always uh, very well received, uh, warmly received. We, we received um, really great positive uh, feedback. And, Building on that, we, we, we um, had already you know, de developed the idea of publishing some of the poems. And our original idea was uh, publishing um, maybe a selection of the poems in a literary magazine. Uh, but we soon realized that uh, really with the diversity of the voices and the linguistic diversity that we had, it would be perhaps more appropriate for a book. So uh, we approached um, um, Transnational Press London and uh, Professor Ibrahim Sekici uh, was very encouraging and he encourages uh, with the idea, they, they welcome the idea of the book and they also suggested that uh, perhaps we, uh, uh, we, we broaden the scope um, and we add more poets and uh, which we did. So um, uh, we uh, started working on poets um, who are not from Iraqi Kurdistan, so uh, other parts of Kurdistan um, and also other dialects. Um, so we, we included poets from Iranian Kurdistan and um, uh, Syrian and Turkish Kurdistan. Um, so uh, that's how uh, really the, the work developed. Um, but uh, what we hoped to achieve with the book was um, really firstly to raise awareness, as um, Clement said, to raise awareness about the richness of um, this ancient uh, literary heritage, which is not much known um, uh, due to its minority position. And I would I like to uh, emphasize that the minority position is 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 not inherent. Is a position is a really relation. Um, economic, um, uh, cultural, and um, um, uh, um, you know other forces that that define a pos minority position of the language, and in this case Kurdish. So we we wanted to raise awareness and show the diversity, really dem demonstrate the diversity of voices, styles, the linguistic diversity, um, um, and to promote scholarship on uh, Kurdish poetry, but specifically um, uh, poetry of Kurdish women uh, because um, Clemence and I did a study, a research study of uh, English translations of Kurdish literature and one of the 
a striking feature that uh, we found out was that um, women are particularly marginalized, really highly marginalized in the English translation of Kurdish literature that we have. So we wanted to bring to light this um, uh, rich part of the Kurdish literary heritage, less noticed, marginalized, but also um, we wanted to encourage um, uh, more translations of Kurdish literature and also en encourage Kurdish speaker to engage in translation and have the confidence to you know, undertake this um, it's seemingly unimaginable task for the native speaker because of really the obsession we, will, we can talk about that later. The obsession was, you know, the fluency, the, the readability of the text. Thank you, Farangis. Um, I think next we'll move to um, to hear from Yasser. Um, so um, good to see that you managed to um, to join us. Um, and uh, so just to briefly introduce Yasser, uh, Dr. Yasser Hassan Ali is a lecturer at um, Navroz University in Iraqi Kurdistan. Um, and he also holds a PhD in Kurdish studies from the University of Exeter. So I think it's very clear that the University of Exeter and its Kurdish studies department is, is really a crucial force in this field, which is very exciting to see. Um, and so in his doctoral research, he examined national identity discourses of contemporary Bahtinani Kurdish poetry in Iraq. Um, and he's published two books in Kurdish. Um, and he is um, active as both a journalist and a writer um, in Kurdistan. And so the, the question that I um, wanted to pose next um, is um, about, you know, um, if you could say a little bit more about this process of um, translation and that Clemence already briefly talked about, um, what were some of the challenges, what were some of the joys, perhaps, of the pleasures of doing the, the translation. And if is there anything to, you want to add to what Farangis and Clemens have already said about motivations, background and so on, please feel free to add that. Yeah, thank you very much for having me and thank you for organizing this event. Uh, actually, just I want to, to say that I'm not considering myself like a literary translator, just I consider myself like and like assistant, I help my colleague um, or my uh, supervisor, Dr. Kelimons, and my colleague, Dr. Um, Farangis. So, I mean, this is should be very clear to all of you. Um, but um, I can talk about how I started. I mean, working in this this project. I would say, actually, as a non-native English speaker. Um, I started like this. I tried to translate a literal or a formal or to find a formal equivalences for the poetic uh, sentences that I am working on. So the first stage was like to find the formal or the literal um, equivalences for my poetic sentences that I aim to translate. And then with the, I mean, with Dr. Kelimons, I mean, specifically, we try to compare the literal or the formal translation with the with the original one, and um, and work on it. I mean, sentence by sentence. And in this stage, we went through the we can call it like a cognitive equivalences to find them uh, in the, I mean, in the your target language. And we ex I explained, and also as Clemence knows, um, Kurdish and English, and of course their English is much, much, much better than me. So she helped me to, I mean, to make it like um, comprehensible or understand understandable to the to English, I mean, readers. But still, I mean, we feel that, I mean, we need someone else to help us, as we are no native uh, English speakers to help us find the functional equivalences in the target language. So here, I mean, the role of Rina Taril was great, actually. She also went through our, I mean, co-translated and she helped us to bring something more um, poetic. And we all together, especially Rina and Clemens, to, to polish what we have done and to edit it, re-edit it and so on. 
And of course, after that, two other, um, I think um, Michelle Waldock also she read and some others um, to English. I think one, the Italian one, I forgot her name. But at the end, I mean, what you see in the book is went through these three or four stages and yes, this is our, I mean, this is my experience with the process of translation, um, this poetic text. Um, yes, if there is anything else you can ask me, I will be happy to answer if I can. Um, is Clemence and Farangis, would you like to add anything um, on this topic of, of translation before we move on um, to other questions? Either way, go ahead. Um, sure. Maybe. Frank, yeah. do, you, do you want to start or do you want to continue? Uh, well, yes, I mean, I could. <laughs> oh, well, oh, oh, I, yeah. thank you. Um, I go on after. So, um, yes, as um, um, uh, Yasser yeah, alluded to, we had um, different strategies, um, different um, um, methods, basically. As, as you know, this is the book, as if you have seen the book, uh, and Clemence already mentioned, it was a collective endeavor. And um, so uh, we had different strategies. We had um, um, individual translators, um, uh, including some of the works that, uh, that I've done. We had co-translation and uh, also collective translation. And um, uh, really following uh, this project, which um, is, is been going on uh, for um, nearly three years, and also uh, uh, my own uh, study and um, the, the research project that uh, Clemence and I did, which is now published on translation and specifically tra English translations of Kurdish literature, we we uh, we developed um, a more uh, critical uh, view of um, translation. You know, power relations in translation, and some of the very uh, prevalent practices. Uh, for instance, I mean, including co-translators, a co-translation which um, uh, has been practiced um, and um, it, um, is, is a really prevalent practice uh, in which um, usually a, a non-native speaker is uh, grouped, uh, works with a native speaker uh, in which the native speaker produce um, quote-unquote, you know, literal translation, the first draft, and then the non-native speaker uh, uh, works, you know, polishes this text. Um, but um, um, for us, um, as, as we have tried to reflect in this book, co-translation is where we have a very clear definition, is where both translators have access to both target and source language. Um, uh, uh, but we also, um, uh, in other instances, um, uh, we had um, uh, we had uh, and highlighted the role of translator editor, translation editor, uh, who um, Yasser mentioned. Uh, uh, Renat Harrow, um, as uh, her help, um, without her help, really we couldn't have done. We could have have completed this project. So it was really crucial. Um, and um, I think Clemence could elaborate more on on that. And now. Um, uh, critical reflection on, on the practices. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, um, Yasser and Frankis, for, for your comment on this. Um, I mean, maybe just um, a, f a few things to add. And uh, as well, um, Marlene, you mentioned the, the joy of, um, <laughs> of um, well, that was a, a question or a point you raised. And I think that's, um, I, I forgot about mentioning that, but I think at the end of the workshop, of like two days working together uh, in small group, I think we were all really um, touched and moved, and um, and we had really like two days full of joy and play around words and um, and poems, and and that was, I think that was one of the most um, uh, nice things of it as well. I mean, as an experience, and um, and that's that's really what. Um, enable us and, and um, make us want to continue um, uh, produce, working more on the poems and working toward, uh, toward, um, uh, toward publication. Um, I think, um, and, that's and so that's a, a very important part of it and, and, and very important part of, of this joy as well has been to work together and to exchange 
um, uh, among um, uh, among ourselves. So if we see in the book, there is like um, I think maybe twenty around twenty participants uh, in in the in the in the translation uh, project. So in some somehow. This is quite maybe uh, peculiar in the uh, in the translation um, world. Also, um, or at least in in the publication, also the, the like the, the practice of translation workshops is very is very common. But uh, we tried, as Frankie say, we tried like to acknowledge um, everyone's role and also to be very um, uh, to be very uh, specific around. Or understanding or definition of uh, of of the roles of um, um, yeah because um, because one what we see oh, I don't want to repeat what uh, what Frank is said about the the common practice of co uh, co translation when we see um, uh, uh, when we see co translator without access to uh, the source language. Um, uh, being acknowledged as a, as a translator can be uh, can be part of like reproducing uh, the domination on uh, on on both um, uh, on on the on the source language in particular uh, when we when the source language is is a minority language or is less known less spoken language and as well on the role and the place of the translate. Uh, uh, of of the translator, which could be um, uh, um, minor, uh, minorized as well, or, or, or put in a position of um, uh, of of domination somehow. So that's one thing, and um, maybe we can come back to that in the in the discussion. But I think as well another thing that we really working on that and working on our practice of translation and and actually not only our practice of translation but we had lots of uh, discussion and and um, question mark while publishing it because it's how do you present the role of everyone uh, the translator the co-translator the editor so that was quite a that was quite um, one of one of the challenges of the publication and 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 there may be question and queries and critique on that um, but that was somehow we try to we try to yeah to to challenge some of the existing practices and and to put forward the role of uh, of everybody in relation to I think in relation to the knowledge of of um, a minority less spoken and dominated language as well uh, so in order or at least being aware of 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 the of the potential of domination of power relationship in uh, in the translation process, and I think that's quite um, it's quite obvious as well from the discussion we we just had on uh, on the issue of confidence in uh, translating is being a translator uh, in having access to the target language English language because um, I mean the three with the three of us we learn English. It's not our native uh, language, and we I think we all had some like well difficulties around that. So and um, but and um, and and there are discussion as well in uh, translation studies about like where the place of the non-native in uh, uh, as a translator and the issue of confidence and gaining confidence and also gaining access to publication. Um, uh, well, publishing houses and publication outlets. So maybe, as well, this could be a. I mean, this project could be a way of like um, engaging with this issue. Don't say that we have any maybe answers, but to think about maybe challenging, as Frank has said, about the issue of um, fluency and um, uh, um, and readability. I think maybe it's like a way of. Um, I mean, this work kind of put some question around around this, around the the, the role of the non-native uh, in uh, as a translator, uh, the role of confidence of the non-native, and in particular when there is so little uh, people with access to the source uh, source language, how do we deal with that? Basically, that was that was um, uh, I think that that's also an important. And how do we develop um, translator? Of Kurdish uh, 
given the fact that there is so many, uh, so less pe people or a few people with, with um, access to both source and target languages and confidence uh, as well, because it's also an issue of like uh, confidence and resources, not only confidence. So that's that's just one thing I don't want to talk too much. Can I, can I mention something uh, just um, um, Clemence reminded me of some challenges actually of the um, when we were dealing with you know the, doing actually translation translating poetry is really challenging it's uh, it's a very difficult task to say the least um, and um, I mean there were many issues were many questions um, that we were dealing with and um, um, just to give you an example of one of them um, which was which was a significant one for us was um, um, do we translate everything? Do we translate all the words? Um, I mean, or do we use you know the, the the known words or the equivalent in English? And um, I think we 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 came up with perhaps I would like to say a balanced uh, position, but we we try to keep at least some of the Kurdish words. And uh, I just give you an example um, in one of the poem. Um, uh, which is a, which is by him, and um, the, the 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 poem, the line reads, "La de chashevi rashit ba derkeve kol me geshit." Peel back. This is how we we translated it. Um, um, uh, Peel back your dark chashev. Show your ro rosy cheek. Bailing is shameful in the 20th century. So we decided to keep. We're thinking, shall we? put um, hijab or, you know, even chador, which is more like no, or shall we keep chashel? Chashel is a Kurdish word. Do we need to provide the glossary? Do we need to put footnote? And at the end, we decided not to not to have the footnote because it's really the context is obvious. What is it? But um, so, yeah, we, we, we left the word and we we hope that this this word now is introduced uh, or has entered at least maybe before was even before was already in English, but I hadn't seen it. Um, we have a Kurdish word in the English language. Uh, it's Chasho. Thanks um, to both of you, um, Farangis and Clemence, and to Yasser as well. I think this is, I mean, absolutely fascinating. All these these discussions about um, about translation. Um, and uh, you know, make, makes me think in, in lots of directions. I think this this question of confidence is really interesting when you think about it in relation to voice. What does it mean to have a voice? What does it mean to have confidence, right? And um, and how does this play out um, when we talk about quote unquote minority languages or minoritarian mi minoritarianized languages, perhaps better to say. Um, and perhaps we can we can discuss more of this also in the Q and A. Um, I'd be really curious to hear. To hear more and also to think about maybe what can be the potential of this kind of practice for other minoritarian languages right and what what can we learn from this um, uh, in a broader context um, but um, maybe I'll, I'll move to the last question um, that i wanted to discuss with you um, and if you want to recite any poetry at this point um, you know feel free feel free to to do so um, so the last question that i wanted to to have you talk about a little bit is how you actually went about um, choosing the um, the poets that are in the book and and the poems um, that you translated, and I can imagine that was probably not an easy process. Um, so I'd be curious to hear um, how you went about that, and feel free um, to to answer. You know, whoever of you wants to go first, uh, feel free to to jump in um, as you want. Yeah, may I say something? Yeah. Go ahead. Yes, please. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I think at the beginning, uh, Dr. Kilimons mentioned that um, we all obligate ourselves to choose, I mean, texts that related to women uh, in Kurdish poetry as a general theme. And then each of us brought his collection of texts according to, for example, to our um, personal taste of the text and also the area of the research and maybe if how they are interest, I mean, if they are interested to us or I mean, uh, I mean, each of us has his or her uh, criteria to choose or to select the poems. And this is in general, but then as we focused 
in our workshop in Iraqi Kurdistan. So uh, I've been requested to choose something from, as I know, Bahdinani Kurdish more than Sorani. So I chose um, two uh, poets from from Iraqi Kurdistan, Bahdinani Kurdish poets, poets, and here I I was I chose two two poets, um, Trifa Duski and Tirish, I mean, and Tir, uh, Tirush Amedi. So why, for example, why Trifa Duski? We had about 10, 12 uh, women poets in Bahdinan at that time. I'm talking um, about 2018 at that time. Yeah, I, I chose um, Trifa Duski as a hairstyle, for example, was very unique, different from the others. And she was, or and she is still one of the very uh, daring poets. And she worked in the, like, uh, like a feminist and and uh, um, like uh, I mean to I mean she asked for equality between I mean I mean men and women and she is very active so I chose her and also because Trifa Duski influenced uh, some other young generation of poets like uh, Vian or like uh, Selwa and some others, uh, Selwa Guli. Uh, uh, yeah, and, and during the workshop also, I mean, I realized how her, I mean, Trifa uh, poetry uh, was, I mean, her poems were attract, uh, attracted to the other, I mean, to the participant in the workshop. So almost all of them like her poems, so they encourage us to continue and translate some other poems of her, not just the two poems during uh, our working in the workshop. So yeah, I mean, uh, this is the criteria that I chose, um, uh, Trifa Duski and Tirush Amedi because she, she writes in Arabic and uh, Dr. Kilimun suggested to encourage the Arab PhD students to engage in this workshop. So uh, we uh, we say why we are not going to take some of her poems and translate it by the, I mean, by some Arab students. And we did actually. Yes, yeah, so this is re um, um, regarding the both posts that I selected. And of course, uh, Farangis and Dr. Kilimons has some maybe other criteria when they choose. Uh, Guliz, uh, Gulizar and Dia Juan and him and Fayek, so yeah. Thank you. Um, so, um, you know, the, the picture, the image of uh, Kurdish poetry that we have is a very male dominated image. It's a, it's a male image, basically, for Kurdish poetry. Um, is portrayed as a male, basically, male dominated. And you can see this um, by uh, uh, just looking at the Kurdish literary historiography, uh, looking at uh, anthologies of uh, Kurdish um, literature that we have in Kurdish, I'm specifically talking. Um, um, in, on pla in classical poetry, um, we don't know, of, I mean, more than two, three names. Um, talking about like mid 19, late 19th century. And even the 20th century, even though women's poetry really um, uh, uh, contributed immensely to development of modern Kurdish poetry, we don't see them acknowledged in um, in Kurdish literary history and um, in you know, canons that have that we have, they're not part of the canon basically. Um, so um, uh, the, the the focus of this book uh, uh, was really to demonstrate women's poetry. Um, not they're not entirely women poetry. We have two men poets, and I explain why we we included them. But um, um, so yeah, we wanted to highlight uh, their their contribution. Um, but uh, the, the linguistic diversity was very important to us. We wanted to have um, it was like a representative of uh, all, all the dialects. 
as well as um, poets, the recognition and acknowledgement of poets who, Kurdish poets who, for uh, any reason, do not write in Kurdish, do not have access to Kurdish, but they, are, they, they, they consider themselves, they, they uh, recognize themselves and should be recognized rightly as Kurdish poets, including Tiroj, as Yasser mentioned. And the poets are from all parts of Kurdistan, um, um, all areas that we know as Kurdistan. Um, and um, the poets we have are established and, as Yasser said, you know, emerging voices. Uh, so we have established uh, well-known poets such as um, Trifadoski, but also other emerging voices. Um, uh, I would just say um, uh, very briefly why um, uh, we have two male poets in this collection. Uh, we have uh, uh, one poem by uh, Hemen, uh, Yadgari Shirin, Shirin's memory, and uh, a poem by Fayak Bekes, um, uh, Nasri. Uh, it's interesting that um, uh, 20th century, throughout the 20th century, although if we look at the records, you know, what we have, historical literary records, we don't know, like women's voices or not, we don't see them. And it seems that, well, at least it, it is portrayed as if women really didn't come along, didn't come along, didn't appear to, or uh, were not active till late 70s or 80s, which you know, it's not, it's not correct. It's a, uh, but uh, women's question or, you know, precision, women's issue, women question, uh, was a very important, was really at the heart of the modern Kurdish poetry and was discussed by all poets throughout the 20th century. So the questions related to women, women's liberation, um, uh, women's education, and the question of unveiling um, that was encouraged all related to the project of modernity and you know the idea and the concept of progress were discussed really occupied the imagination of um, Kurdish poets uh, like really the best part of the 20th century um, and these were male poets you know that were discussing encouraging education we have some um, and, and the two poets that we have here we have included in here in this book Herman and Vickers are uh, the, uh, known to be the, um, the really ardent advocate of women education and women liberation. But also I mentioned that we be really hoping that we encourage scholarship um, with this book and with the samples that we have here. So um, we, I mean, you, if you read these two poems, um, uh, both poets uh, not only encourage education, you know, women go get education they also um, um, uh, vehemently encourage unveiling as a sign of progress uh, but uh, you see other you know um, um, con uh, you, you could say you know contradictory concept in the same poet for instance they say you know um, uh, uh, um, famously says um, so your beauty and jewels are learning and modesty. So at the same time, they, they encourage unveiling, they, 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 they remind women that they have to be modest and this <laughs> cry and call for education is, is, is coupled with, you know, emphasize on modesty. And also you see that, that this encouragement was really part of the um, nationalistic project and women's edu education was encouraged because they believed that uh, educated mothers would uh, would um, produce <laughs> educated sons, and uh, it was important for the progress of the nation. So that's why we we wanted to show these voices, and um, yeah, and, and hopefully encourage some debate around the issue because they're not um, so the, the, the understudied in Kurdish studies. Do you want to go next? Yeah, maybe, uh, maybe, maybe actually very shortly to say that um, because I think um, uh, Yasha and Frank is, I've, I've said already quite, um, quite, quite a lot about like um, um, the selection process. But maybe just to th to say that, um, well, at the end, it's not an anthology, um, and uh, this is still to be done. <laughs> 
um, and there is a lot of work to done and uh, to be done. And um, and uh, I think that what what we wanted to do was to present a diversity of of voice, um, whether they are recognized, celebrated voices, um, or um, really um, unknown uh, voices, um, uh, mar margin marginal or emerging voices uh, in different uh, in different languages and, uh, and dialect and I think um, um, that's um, and also we wanted I think with that to present this diversity of voices so from different parts of, of Kurdistan so we've um, so didn't mention but we included um, one poem uh, one poet from uh, Syria the one one uh, who writes in, uh, in Kurmanji and um, and one poet from um, Turkey, who also writes in Kurmanji, Gulizer, but there are many more. And um, so there are examples of, um, of voices, and I think which have been selected because of their importance, but also and in terms of like um, in, in, the, in Kurdish literature, um, the um, aesthetical, um, uh, the importance of their uh, um, well, or aesthetic taste, maybe, and or, or some, sometime as well, or personal taste. Uh, so I think, yeah, that's. Um, I just want, yeah, I just wanted to say that it presents some voices, and uh, and because we really enjoyed, I think, this experience and um, and spending this time together, working together, we hope that we can continue and, and different similar project, and that some other as well will will take this work um, further and um, yeah, and and continue translating um, this poetry and literature in English. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you. Um, I suggest that um, you know, we, we can discuss um, in more detail during the Q&A. Um, and for those of you listening, just to remind you that um, you can write your questions. You can already, if you have a question now already, you can um, start writing a question into the live chat function. Um, or you can write them later whenever they come to your mind. Um, but before we get to the Q&A um, and sort of um, discuss in more detail, I want to inv invite Holly Mason um, to um, present her view on the book as somebody who has not directly been involved in, in the making and in the editing, but as um, a poet herself, um, a female poet, a Kurdish-American poet, um, you know, has um, has this has a very specific perspective, um, I believe, on on that kind of um, work. So, just to introduce her briefly, Holly Mason is a Kurdish American poet um, who holds a Master of Fine Arts in, post, in Poetry from George Mason University, where she's also currently working, um, and where she's active in um, the Anti-Racism and Inclusive Excellence Task Force. Um, she is on the staff of Poetry Daily, um, and her poetry, prose, and reviews have been published in various journals, including um, work highlighting Kurdish writers, translators, and scholars in an attempt to um, more widely showcase, showcase poetry and writing from Kurds and Kurdish diasporic writers, and in particular also from female writers. So who better to, um, to give us um, her view on, um, on this publication? Holly, um, the floor is yours. Oh, thank you so much, and thank you for inviting me to be a part of this book launch. Um, this book means a lot to me. Um, <clears throat> I'll try to be quick, though. Um, I really just want to say I'm very pleased to speak about the importance of this book. <clears throat> Excuse me. Back in October of 2019, when Rojava was in the news, more U.S. poets um, were asking more than ever where they could find Kurdish poetry translated into English. Um, in working to highlight and share Kurdish poetry translated into English, I realized that there wasn't much as much available and readily accessible as there was in other languages in translation. So even within the reputable poetry organization that I had just started working for, Poetry Daily, an organization that highlights contemporary poetry with an interest also in poetry globally and in translation. Um, but most of the translations in their da database and other literary journals were from uh, languages like Spanish, German, uh, Chinese and various dialects and Italian. And then languages from the Swana region um, were mostly uh, Arabic or a little bit of Farsi or Persian and a little Turkish. So 
In June of 2020, Poetry Daily put out its first poem translated from Kurdish. But still, what I also noticed was that the one anthology out there at the time of Kurdish poetry translated into English and many of the other individual poems translated in various literary journals were predominantly written by men, possibly translated by women, but written initially by Kurdish men. So that brings me to this book. <laughs> there is no other collection like it right now, truly, that offers a full book of poems showcasing Kurdish female poetry and intergenerational women spanning across time and translated from various Kurdish dialects into English. But another thing that makes this book stand out is not just its project and representation, but that the poems are, are of incredible quality. When we talk about translations at Poetry Daily, we talk about how the poem shines beyond being just a translation. So, um, aside from offering a new perspective, perhaps, or offering understanding from a different, quote unquote, people group, one of the best things about reading poetry in translation is discovering new and exciting language patterns and new ways of articulating. It is being awed by dazzling lines and enchanting phrasing, seeing and hearing language and syntax that subverts what one typically encounters in poems written in English. So in here, there's a real delight in the poetry and poetics. I believe that poetry translates the human experience and great translations offer up real delight in the poetry and poetics of the human experience. I know that our panel, the panelists and editors of this book will be perhaps reading some poems, so I just want to offer a couple excerpts to speak to the quality of these poems. Um, so I'm just going to offer a couple lines here. Um, so the, there are some really incredibly beautiful lines and soft rhymes mm -hmm. in a poem that is an elegy for a husband. These soft rhymes support the speaker's tenderness in her elegy of losing her beloved, in Erdogan's titled An Elegy for Koshro. My mm. Koshro, spring is here. How I wish it would not have come this year, that no sprouts would have sprung in the garden, no trees would have come into buds, no nightingale in the meadow, no dew on the petals. I offer that excerpt to show that the speaker aches for her husband and seeing spring blooming all around her, signs of life and new life everywhere, she at the same moment laments his death. And really it's the soft rhyme at the end of those lines that help to successfully convey the pain and tenderness through the poetic craft. Another example is in this small excerpt um, where we can see the way voice comes through with incredible strength. Here in this excerpt I'm about to read, we see voice as the backbone of the poem. So here is a, stan uh, here is a uh, stanza from Doski's Symphony, part three. I am a translucent woman like Basil's leaves. In your novels and in your poems, I hand you the key of the city so the book may lose its purity in your hands. Undress the book from its letters turn it into wine, give it to the birds so they can dance full of desire. The stacking of imperative commands there in the end is really strong. In this collection, we see poems of female empowerment, power and agency, but we also get a glimpse into the reality of female oppression and suppression in other poems. There is a really balanced range in the collection and not just one note. One of the best things about women's voices from Kurdistan is that it offers variety in perspective, experience, and representation of women in Kurdistan and of Kurdish women. It does not, it, it does not paint them all as the same. It doesn't just present Kurds and Kurdish women as a monolith, but rather offers a breadth of voices and experiences ranging in theme. There are poems of loss and of love, of questions and wisdom, 
of ancestral memory, familial longing, vulnerability, and empowerment, and delight. Finally, as a great example of skillful use of poetics, Husseini uses metaphor and imagery in the poem titled Question to articulate the magic and meaningfulness of her matriarchal lineage in thinking of the scarf worn by her mother and possibly her grandmother, conveying the way inherited artifacts and items can offer us comfort, connectivity, and more. She writes, and my head is an open window to the sky, wishing to host the sun at day and the moon and the stars at night. My mother also left a pair of pitch black glasses. It says, this is the world as you see it. With every thunderclap, a mushroom of a hundred questions, old and new sprout in my eyes. Finally, as the daughter myself, as the daughter of diaspora, the daughter of a Kurdish woman who came to the US as a refugee, and being a Kurdish American poet who is not able to read Kurdish, I'm so grateful for this collection and for the work you have all put into this powerful project. Thank you. Thank you so much, Holly. This is a um, really beautiful um, evaluation of, um, of the book and really, you know, brings out what's so important um, about this work. Um, I wonder if at this point um, you editors would like to, is there anything you want to respond or would you like to um, read out some poetry yourself before we, um, you know, take some questions? Or do you want to head right to the to the questions. So far there's no question, but hopefully there'll be some coming in. It can be. Would you like to do Yes, sir? You mute. You're muted, yeah, we can't hear you. Maybe after your phone is. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, um, oh. Holly, I would like you to read the English uh, translation, please, after the Kurdish. So I would like um, to read um, Khosrow and Wahar, an elegy for Khosrow, um, poem by Masura Khanum, uh, Masura Erdalan, and it's an excerpt of, uh, of, of the poem, uh, really. Um, and it's in um, uh, Haurami, the poem is in Haurami. Khasraum Wahar, Yashaw Neyawa, Imsal Nawahar, Bernayan Waber Gulan Jaguzar, Nekero Derech Shkofa Ishar, Nasahni Chaman, Nawan Bulbul, Hani Nekesho, Jawa Nawigul, Niluferta Hash, Bernayo Jaal, Jarui Gulis Surh, Nekesho Gulal, Benef Show Sumbul Nasinu Shobo, Takam Iqiyam Bernayan Jako, So Sanula Lo Ratnao Gulazert, Hani Sows Nabon, Chani Sozu Dert, Supai Gulalan, Huarun Gunban, Shakao Yak Rangzert, Jigger Perhunban. And you'd like me to read in English now? And page 21, correct? Yes. Okay. My Koshro, spring is here. How I wish it would not have come this year. No sprouts would have sprung in the garden. No trees would have come into buds. No nightingale in the meadow. No dew on the petals. How I wish water lilies did not bloom until doomsday. And no rose water was steep that violets, wallflowers, and hyacinths never push out of the ground again, that tulips, lilies, yellow flowers, and basil would not spring forth my pain. How I wish the throngs of blossoms would be destroyed and poppies would yellow with aching hearts. Thank you so much. Um, also, maybe just to, to read out, um, we just had a comment from Chinar in the chat who says, 
that she's so happy and amazed by this. I'm sitting with goosebumps all over my body. Thank you. So I think this goes to show um, the success um, of this work. Um, anyone else? Want, do you want to read another poem, maybe? I don't know, Clemence, yeah, sir? Um, yes, may I read uh, an, yeah. another uh, poem uh, by Trifaduski, Falling Apart, uh, Silbon. I think it's in page 69, something like that, 7069. Yes? Go ahead, yes, sir. Okay. Silbon. Avru to the Gelmini am Jutin. Hamotish him in Avru Juta. Men do the Lahana, do Roh. Do me Jo, do Nishtimon. Bichiji, men take Bishkenen. Sereku, Benik Bukan, Herbena Tashmet head. As Herrangit at them, Tomat at them. Mephelawisun Pachinara Keva da Cotton, the Belgitishman Varian. Two eat menda pitkiri. Yes, if you read, please, the English translation. Holy. Absolutely. Ah, oh, thank you. Falling apart. Today you are with me. We are a couple. All my things are coupled. I have two hearts, two souls, two histories, and two homelands. Even if you leave me, and they break me, turn me upside down. I will still smell of you, will carry your color, taste of you. If they hang me from a plain tree and shake me, your leaves will fall off me. You are grafted to me. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, another poem or shall we? Question, Clemence, maybe? Maybe yeah, I could read another poem if there is. Um, yeah, there is no I think it would be lovely. Yeah, I, I just want uh, wanted to uh, thank you as well, Holly, for uh, your very very nice um, comments and discussion on on the book. They're really really touching and moving. So thank you, and also I think you touch upon like um, um, what the variety of themes and voice, and I think it's something actually that we didn't mention, but we were quite. Um, somehow um, careful in the choice of um, at least some of the poems to to present this diversity of, of, of uh, and, and show that well, like, women engage with with a variety of issues um, in, and um, well including like more common issue that we find more commonly in Kurdish poetry like war violence nationalism but also love but also work I think uh, they talk about um, in their poetry, in, uh, about their work, about the, the way they, they, they make a living, and about the, the way they experience their well, their, um, their existential, their existence, and their relationship to the world, and um, and, and, and uh, so I think that 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 was um, a really important issue as well to to mention. So thank you, um, thank you. So well, I, I read um, I read the poem from uh, Gulizer. Um, so at the end, um, at the end of the book, it's page eight, 86, and it's called Hate. Uh, so it's in Kurmanji, and as well, something that we really wanted to do is, is to have this bilingual edition. So I, I don't think we mentioned that, but to present, to prevent the original text along with um, um, along with the English translation that was important for us in this kind of like minority or minoritized language, to have the original language next to the translation. So, Khaid, as Evzaroka Jubil Khaimi, as Evzaroka Kujher Kura Govande, Dorbudur, the Hat Khemrandan, Evzaroka, the Her Dawate de Khemran, Guligwania Govande de Ker, Evzaroka, the Gavan Betishin, the Chu Udahat, Evzarok, the Lewe Her Hebush Govande, the Her Jar, the Village. Would you like to read the translation for me? Sure. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Anger. I am that child girl from that people. I am that child girl turned away 
from the golden dance turn by turn that child girl in her best dresses at wedding parties hair did the dance that child girl was limping around that child girl her heart was always set on the governed but each time the heart broke the govern broke too thank you thank you <laughs> <laughs> um I don't know if uh, anyone listening has any um, questions or comments. If so, please um, do write them in, in the live chat where um, where you will also be able to find a link um, to the book um, if after after this um, these presentations you feel like um, if you haven't had the chance to read it yet and you feel like reading it, please do check it out. The, the link is in the chat. Um, I don't know if uh, if there are no questions for the moment. Again, please feel free to write them in the chat. I have a lot of questions, <laughs> um, but I was wondering one thing that maybe we could discuss a little bit more is that um, Farang is. I think you mentioned, um, you know, when you were discussing the the decision to sorry guys when you were when you were discussing discussing the discussion the decision to include also male um, Kurdish poets. You were discussing about this question of the the women's question or the women's um, issue, and how that has been, you know, sort of um, uh, an issue within Kurdish poetry throughout the 20th century. And then in the um, in the book itself, you also have um, poems that quite explicitly um, address by female authors that quite explicitly address female sexuality. And so, where you have these male um, early 20th century poets, you know, reminding women of you know, trying to get education, but then also being modest. Um, here we also see um, expressions of um, quite open expressions of female sexuality. So I was wondering if you could, um, if one of you wanted to comment a little bit on this question of, um, you know, female sexuality and how it appears or does not appear um, in, in the poetry that's in the book, but perhaps also more broadly um, in Kurdish poetry. I don't know, Farangis, do you want to go ahead? Um, but anyone? Wants yeah, to um, uh, it's, a, it's a very good question. Thank you. And a difficult question, really, to answer because, um, I'm, well, I'll tell you why, basically, um, talking about women's poetry, a Kurdish woman poetry in depth, is difficult because, because of the scarcity of the material that we have. We, uh, um, so um, I, I mentioned that. Um, uh, Basically, it is understood or is believed that um, women's um, voices um, emerged mainly from, uh, mostly from um, late 70s and 80s, and that's when uh, women voices became prominent. And I've been engaged in a, in, in a research that um, um, it, it's ongoing, but um, uh, uh, just doing some primary archive, archival research. Um, I, uh, I have learned, I have uncovered that there are so many voices in the 20th century that have been simply erased from uh, the history, <laughs> the history of Kurdish literature. And I, I was absolutely um, shocked, uh, for instance, you know, to know that uh, there were so many uh, poets, writers, women writers who uh, were contributing, for instance, to the Kurdish, uh, to early Kurdish newspapers. You know, you look at um, some of the works we have. So I have found um, uh, texts from um, as early as 1920s, and um, uh, some some of them, some of the texts we have them in archives um, um, in in Kurdistan, um, um, and um, but they ha they're not yet published. They're not accessible. So really researching this, the written literary text, written literary, um, Kurdish written, written literature, uh, women's literature is, is, is still at its early stages because we need, we first need to read the text and we have lost so much and oh, we yet don't have access to some of them. I'll, I'll just give you one example, which was really, which is an exciting example and it also shows you how much has been lost or has been neglected, marginalized. 
so um, uh, in 2018, um, a collection, um, a Diwan, was published by Zainab Khan. Uh, also known as Kche Kurd. And um, the, the story behind it, its uncovering what is really fascinating. Um, so uh, Zainab Khan uh, uh, was the eldest sister of Dildar, who anyone who is interested or knows about Kurdish poetry have, have probably heard of him. Dildar uh, is a poet that wrote the Kurdish anthem, and we all know about Dildar. But um, uh, Zainab Khan um, wrote from the 19, late 20s and uh, uh, published, um, for instance, in, in the Kurdish papers of the time. And, uh, and the way that she was discovered in uh, when um, uh, Bin Kejin, the Jean's uh, Center for, uh, for Archive in Soleimania, uh, when they decided to uh, republish um, uh, one of the um, uh, literary journal called Galawish, which is, is a very significant publication uh, in the 40s, when they uh, uh, republished, uh, pre prepared the, 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 what they had a uh, document for, um, the, the, the journal for republication, they had decided to uh, produce a first, the, the dedicate the first volume to an introduction to the people who the writers who had contributed and they come across a, po um, a text which is poetry prose by Kuche Kurt, Kurdish girl and um, they don't know anything about this uh, this also and it was really the curiosity of one researcher who was not satisfied was okay maybe this is written by a male <laughs> as it's often explained uh, they just wanted to know to say that um, uh, Kurtz also had female writers. Uh, he wasn't uh, he wasn't satisfied, and um, his curiosity and uh, search uh, led him to discover the divan of uh, the, the a, a very large collection of poems by these poets. And her works are, are are just amazing. It's it's really incredible the quality, the themes, and um, uh, yet it it remained as manuscript. Um, till 2018 and there are many more, many more like that. So, um, I mean, it, I didn't answer your question really, but it was, I, I just wanted to say that it's um, uh, perhaps Clemence and Yasser could, could, uh, could address the question more, but it's, it's just so, we have lost so much or we don't have access to yet so much of the material. I think it's, we, we need to read more to to understand and research more. Thank maybe you. Could, yeah, Clemence, oh. go ahead, please. Yeah. Um, yeah, maybe quickly a brief word and maybe Yasser, you want to add something because I think in this um, in the in this um, selection in particular, the poems by Trifadowski are quite explicit in terms of sexuality and and woman desire and um, and, um, and that was your selection, yes, so maybe you can talk a bit more about her and about her influence, but I think that's still, um, uh, I think um, somehow the, the theme of, of sexuality is not, is, is not an easy theme for women to deal with in, the, in their poetry, and um, maybe something I could tell about, um, and, and so hence the specific place and the really important role of, of Trifa, but I speak under the control of, of Yasser, uh, will be able to tell more. But um, we also did, um, following this project, um, uh, we, uh, we did um, a field research, uh, the three of us together in, um, in the Hook in Badinon, working um, um, uh, with um, female uh, writers um, in, in the Hook area and, uh, and looking really at um, well, at, at their experiences as writer and um, and as as, uh, as how a female writer make uh, produce make voice and uh, um, and, uh, and, um, and 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 um, and uh, and get or not a position in the in the literary field in um, Iraq, Iraq, Kurdistan, and Babylon um, area as well. And something that we really feel uh, that at least uh, from uh, one one of the 
uh, issue I really noticed, and maybe you, uh, it's, it, um, it's the issue of um, self censorship, uh, the issue of like um, uh, still the fact of uh, being a female writer is not necessarily an easy place uh, to have in the family uh, and uh, and uh, and in the society. I speak for the Berlin area, what we saw, and so quite a few of books that they should like not being able to write necessarily everything uh, what they would like to write in their uh, in their um, in their uh, poetry. So I think so that maybe um, they are like and and this this may be also particular to this area and, and we can see different contexts in uh, in Sorani region and, and in Kulmanji as well. But it's, uh, I think it's a very interesting uh, point to um, um, to follow. Yeah, and, uh, but maybe I don't know. Yes, if you want to find particular uh, uh, influence. Um, or, or sexuality more generally, you know. Um, yes, uh, just regarding, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Um, regarding uh, Trifadouski's poems, I would say that if you compare um, Trifa with others Kurdish poets, especially in Bahadinan, you can see and I mean, I mean, until today, such voice that who talk or to, uh, who who depicts like very uh, intimate um, moments in her life, but without without the help of her husband. I mean, this is also we have to mention this. Without the support of her husband, she couldn't do that. I mean. So that's why we can consider that her poems, like letters, she address, she addresses probably her husband, and she depicted some very intimate moment, maybe in her life, or we can see also like a general. But I mean, with her support, she could do that, and it, it's not easy, and especially in Bahadinani, as usually. Uh, it's described like a tribal society if you compare with Suleimania, for example. But she, I mean, she faced all of obstacles and she could um, establish her name in the, uh, I mean, in the, the arena of literary or of literature. And yeah, I mean, so I mean, the point that I want to mention that without the support of her husband, she couldn't do it because um, she started in 19, but her published uh, collections of poems uh, were in 2000, I think, the beginning of 2000. And after, uh, after 20, 2020, yes, after 20 years, we couldn't hear such voices to talk about very, I mean, sexual issues and uh, desires and what she wanted to convey as a woman and to express herself. Yeah. Thank you. That's really interesting. And it made me also think about, you know, um, the interrelations between the written and, and the oral um, and, and, you know, how these different media open up different possibilities for saying things, for not saying things, for saying them openly, not openly. Um, you know, questions of authorship and anonymity. I mean, there's a lot to, to think about here and it's really um, it's really a fascinating field. Um, there's one question here um, in the chat by Daban Jaff, who says, thank you very much for the event um, and for these amazing people. I'm wondering if there will be a second volume of this project. So um, I wonder, you know, have you already started working on um, on a sequel to this or what are your plans for the future? Clearly there is there is demand. So Yeah. Um, well, I think there is no clear plan for a second volume. Not. I mean, not a second volume as such, but um, we'll be discussing about uh, working, continuing working together on translation. And I think because it's been like a, a real pleasure as well for us and um, an enriching experience. And but um, I think we all agree that um, Swiss Frankies and Yasser yeah, so that there is a need for like a more comprehensive uh, work. So. Um, um, 
So there may be the work of a bigger team, but that's my um, that's my um, uh, view. I don't know if I want to say something else about about that. Does anyone else want to add anything? Um, well, um, uh, we we just really hope that this <laughs> this with this volume, you know, this will encourage more translation, not uh, necessarily by us, <laughs> and it's it's just a really building as a first building block, and um, it's it's the first step, I think, in the way that uh, we have approached it, and um, um, we can only hope that um, uh, more. Um, translation will be available. Yeah, I agree definitely. There, um, there should be more also in different languages then, right? I mean, uh, we're talking about English, but, um, you know, it would be nice to, to diversify uh, also beyond that. Um, I don't know if there's any further comments, oh. questions. Can you go ahead? That? No, talking about the different languages, I saw, but I haven't yet um, um, had the book in my hand. There is um, um, a book, I don't know how it's called, if it's an anthology or not, but it's like um, 30 poems, uh, 30 poets from um, Kurdish women poems actually translated into French, so uh, very recently. So that's, uh, uh, so uh, I'm looking forward to, uh, to see the book and, and the work to see um, uh, how, they, how they did that. But definitely, there, there is need in other languages, and there is work being done in other languages as well. So, yeah, mm. uh, just a comment. Um, could find a reference actually to put in the chat. Yeah, that sounds really um, exciting. Definitely. Um, we're just at the end of our um, of the time that we have allocated. Um, so, if there are no further questions, no further comments, um, I suggest that we can end here. Unless you want to, anybody wants to add anything? I see that Janan um, uh, has, has put a question. Ah, ah, okay, yeah, now I see that actually. Sorry, I didn't see that. Could this new era, okay, let me read it out. Could this new era be a beginning to suggest a beautiful translation of these amazing Kurdish poems into the English studies in Kurdistan's educational system? Um, so, um, I don't know if uh, Farangiz or Yasser, you're probably most familiar with the, with the education system um, in Kurdistan, whether there's um, any... Yeah, go ahead Yasser for yeah, translation. Absolutely. Just um, in Nauru's University, um, the Department of Translation, um, they asked me, I mean, to at least to uh, buy some copies from you, I mean, from the publisher, in order to, I mean, for the students of um, translation to compare and get or to benefit from um, the different works that we worked in. So the idea is to, to see how, I mean, especially this model, crew translation is something in, in this book, it's something kind of, it's something new, our model. Um, so it's interesting to the teachers of the department and the head of the department. Uh, he's very interesting in this um, in this book, and he encouraged me to. I mean, actually, he asked me to buy um, some copies of the book, and he will or the department will because actually we have um, a topic, a literary translation, they were study like a practical uh, material for them and they will compare the original target and the source languages. So, I mean, I can, I, mean, I have a bit, I mean, knowledge about this small part of higher education, especially in Nauru's university, yeah. That sounds, um, that sounds great. I don't know if anybody wants to add, Farangis maybe? Yes, um, uh, well, I, I hope so, Janar. I hope really that they would be integrated in the educational system, but also really how, really how um, 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 was, uh, you know, with more attention um, or the more studies and discussion and bringing to light the, the work 
the work of uh, women um, uh, authors, Kurdish women authors. I think we, that, that there is a need to rewrite the Kurdish literary history. It's um, um, the, the, we need uh, definitely rewriting uh, or rethinking, reflecting on the canon. Um, and yeah, re-examining um, our knowledge of Kurdish literature. Yeah, definitely. I think this this is a, a call to action <laughs> that um, I think resonates probably with um, with me for sure, and I'm sure with with other people um, who you know have have been able to have a look at the book. Um, I encourage everyone to, to who has not been able to to see the book yet um, to check it out. The link, um, as I said, is in the chat, and um, I would suggest we close on this on this note. Um, thank you very much um, to to all of you for for being here for discussing with us. Um, it's really very very exciting um, to think about you know the new work that that might come from this and sort of you know the kind of new avenues that that this will open up. So um, yeah, this is uh, exciting and and sort of you know gives motivation and energy to to do more. Um, and it's just such beautiful poetry, I think it's wholly, really beautifully also illustrated, you know, it's just beautiful and, you know, there's a joy in, in reading the poetry. So um, I think we should remember that as well. Uh, thank you so much. Um, and uh, remember, there will be more book launches and more events um, to come in the future. So keep an eye open for that. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.